stamp in your fist like Roy Smythe. Uh, and don't take any nonsense from that hoity-toity lot over there. And don't ever forget where you come from. Well, in 1998, um, Jane Tranter and Pippa Harris uh, brought the books to me and asked me if I could um, find a way to adapt them for the BBC. Once I'd realised that it should be a series, then it was about where we're going to set this series. And and then the idea of um, having not focusing on one community but keeping both communities seemed a really good way to come at it, given the title of the book, Lark Rise to Candleford. Um, and to have one character go from Lark Rise to Candleford gave us the format, the form, and then building the world from the post office out. Then it was about... How do we build, you know, which characters do we need to build a series? Uh, which are the primary Lartrise characters? Which are the primary Candleford characters and how do they relate? The main thing, I suppose, is making sure that there was a difference between the two, from the hamlet of Lartrise to the small burgeoning town of Candleford. What we didn't want was we didn't want to produce a mannered period drama. We wanted something that was a little bit roughed up at the edges. So in, in um, translation from design into construction and to what we have now, that was what we really did want to do. And I think Malcolm um, Thornton and John Thorpe did a fantastic job in order to realise that. The books are full of detail, almost too much really, in terms of um, the time we've got to plan uh, uh, the design of a show like this, uh, the budget, the amount of detail in there was almost too much for us to cope with really, but in terms of reference and um, a Bible almost to, to hang on to, it was a very important, um, uh, it was very important for us to, to use the book and to try and, where possible, stick faithfully to some of the descriptions that, uh, that are contained there. Really. A wonderful designer, Malcolm Thornton, designed the, this hamlet and this um, town. Um, and even just, you know, we, we all went down to the farmyard and he got out his plans and he pointed up this, you know, this track and said, this is the main street of Candleford. And we had the drawings and we had the dirt track. And, I mean, the, the main facade of the shops in Candleford, behind it is a cow shed. You know, so we just, he just did this wonderful job of constructing this world out of nothing. I mean, the whole piece of the challenge in terms of how we were going to conceive the staging of this piece, you know, the, the fact that we, we had this um, agricultural hamlet in the middle of a, a sea of gold, as the book describes, and then we had the contrast with the, um, the market town nearby, really. We, we decided very soon that it would be impossible, with the amount of material to be shot, a number of episodes, to actually take over an existing uh, town and village location, really. It would just be too much work to adapt. So very quickly we decided to create our version of Light Cries and Candlewood in a controlled environment. And the biggest challenge for me really was to really try and capture what the book describes in terms of the village, um, the, the sense of how the people's lives in this village um, impacted on the architecture, what they did for a living, how that affected uh, the money they had from their livings, how that affected the, uh, the look of the cottages, how they could be maintained. So we had this element of uh, a drabness when we needed it in terms of inclement weather and this place would look slightly muddy and almost a bit damp around the edges but when the sun shone it was harvest time suddenly it came into, a, in, into its own in terms of colour and lightness really. So in creating Lark Cries that was the, the biggest challenge really there to, to find ways of um, allowing those those themes to come to the fore. I got off at, uh, at, the, at the location, was wandering through our village, saying, well, where's the set? Because I thought there were these, these outbuildings, these beautifully tended outbuildings, um, and, and buildings that were already in existence. And they're extraordinary, three-dimensional, fully built, fully formed, um, um, building creations, these village creations. And uh, just the craftsmanship has gone into them is extraordinary. It's been quite challenging in that. Also, trying to build old houses with new building materials to look old in a kind of quite exposed area. And the same thing with Candleford. I felt instinctively this is where we should be building Candleford because, of the, again, the existing buildings. But at the end of what we are calling the Market Square was a, the end profile of a, of a barn and it just seemed the perfect um, exterior for the 
post office with its lean-to roof and, and bay window. And the challenge being to suggest this commercial aspect that uh, Larkrise didn't have. The fact that this is a bustling town, maybe it's got aspirations um, above its station possibly, but the idea that um, you know, it, it saw itself as something separate and um, certainly not uh, and above the world of the Lark Risers, really. Basically, it's to find somewhere that the 21st century hasn't, hasn't kind of entered into. We were building in an established surroundings, which were Grade 2 listed buildings, and therefore English heritage have uh, an element of having to find out about the design, how we were attaching our new builds to the old builds, treating the wood and treating their buildings, the finishes on their buildings, so that it all was kind of harmonious. And when we pull out, we haven't left any staining or damaging or altering the existing buildings in any way. One of the things we had to do was to buy the contents of the field next to Lark Rise so that we could put cranes in and general pieces of equipment. We, we cut a road through the field too, so it would allow us to have a, a nice little carriage and people wandering across the field workers coming home at night. Um, and knowing that there's a possibly um, second or even third series um, that could come out of this, the sets had to be built, A, to last in the sort of weather we're now experiencing over a typical summer now. And with a certain amount of maintenance, uh, you know, built to last for possibly a year or 18 months, something like that, really. But it's been really some nice things to see and to be part of in doing this period drama because we've had quite a few horses out, heavy horse, we've been doing various things the old-fashioned way, and it's quite nice to see it. And hope, hopefully the viewers will appreciate the snippets that we do get into the programme of kind of rural life. For cast and crew that have worked mainly, if they've only worked mainly in television, it's not often that they would see sets and finishes of this sort of standard and degree of detail, really. Um, when we showed um, Dawn French her cottage, i.e. Caroline's cottage, she was really surprised about the floor because we used um, concrete bricks on the floor, which is a period detail, the bricks, not the concrete as such, but... I think, you know, if you've, as an artist, you've been working, used to working mainly in video studios, to come onto a stage set and see that sort of degree of finishes is quite surprising, really, and she got quite excited over her, her, her brick tiles, really, on the floor. Ma! Ma, wake up! The little ones are after their dinner. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never worked on a job like this where so much care has been taken about the sets. Um, the detail is amazing. The build is amazing. The um, the huge lark rise set outside is phenomenal. Um, I. I it's just the kind of the best kind of thing that the BBC does, in fact. You know, where you just think, hooray, this is exactly what people want to see.